little fox. The Frog Prince. Once upon a time, there lived a king with a beautiful daughter. She liked to play with her golden ball by the pond near the forest. One day, the princess accidentally let the ball fall into the pond. Splash! Oops! Oh no! She cried. She tried to find her ball in the pond, but the water was too deep. The princess began to cry very loudly. An ugly frog sitting on a rock by the pond heard her. Boo! Oh! Now what will I do? I have lost my golden ball forever. She said. What is the matter, princess? Why are you crying? The frog asked. I am crying because my golden ball fell into the pond. She answered. Do not cry. I can help you," said the frog. "How can this ugly frog help me?" the princess wondered. The ugly frog paused. "Hmm. What will you give me for finding your golden ball?" he asked. "I will give you whatever you want, dear frog," the princess promised. "I will give you my jewels. I will even give you the golden crown I am wearing." I do not want your jewels or your crown," answered the frog. "But promise me this: take me back to the castle and let me sit by you and eat with you. And you must kiss me too. Promise me. Then I will go down into the pond and get your ball." "Oh, if I must, yes, I promise you all that you wish," the princess consented. "Now please hurry." So the frog hopped into the pond and retrieved the golden ball. He tossed it onto the grass. The princess was very happy. Oh, my golden ball! Thank you, frog," she said. She picked up the ball and hurried away. Wait, wait! Called the frog. Take me with you. I cannot run as fast as you can. But the princess ignored him and hurried back to her castle and closed the door. The frog is talking nonsense. The forest is the right place for a frog. Life in the castle is not for him," she said to herself. The next day, the frog hopped up to the castle door and knocked. "Oh, princess! Princess! Open the door for me!" "Oh no! It is the ugly frog. Make him go away," the princess told her servant. The servant went to the door and told the frog to leave immediately. She slammed the door in the poor frog's face, but the frog did not go away. Princess, princess, open the door for me. Keep the promise you made to me. If you don't open the door, I will cry here day and night until you do. Open the door. The king noticed that his daughter was bothered by something. My child, what are you afraid of? Is there something scary outside? He asked. No, it is nothing. She answered. It is only a disgusting frog. She then told her father how the frog had helped her. Dear child, you must keep your promise to the frog. A promise is a promise. Go and let him in. So the princess let him in, and they all sat down to eat. Lift me up beside you, princess," the frog asked. But the princess didn't want to. "Dear, a promise is a promise," said the king. "You should not make a promise if you do not intend to keep it." The princess did not want the frog near her, but she could not disobey her father, so she let the frog hop up beside her. "Now push your golden plate nearer to me." I am hungry, and I want to eat with you," the frog said. The frog enjoyed all of the food, but the princess had no appetite because she did not like being near the ugly frog. After dinner, the princess went to her room, but the frog insisted on following her. When she closed the door, he made his last demand. "Dear princess, it is time for you to kiss me. If you do not, I will tell your father." Oh no! The princess protested. 
she grabbed the frog and threw him against the wall. Now you will be quiet, you ugly frog! Oh! Groaned the frog. Then it was very still. The princess quickly regretted what she had done. Oh, is he dead? Oh my, what have I done? She picked up the ugly frog very tenderly, but the frog still did not move. The princess felt very sorry for him. He just wanted to be my friend. What have I done to this poor frog? She said, and she kissed the frog as she cried. Suddenly, with a bright flash of light, the ugly frog transformed into a handsome prince. Wow, you broke the spell, he said. A long time ago, a wicked witch turned me into an ugly frog just because I did not like her. Only the kiss of a beautiful princess could save me. Thank you, dear princess. The princess was overjoyed at the change. In no time at all, the prince and the princess fell in love and were married, and they lived happily ever after. The honest woodcutter. Once upon a time, there lived a man named Thomas the lumberjack. A lumberjack is someone who cuts wood. Thomas was a big man with bushy red hair and a bushy red beard. Every day, with a large wooden axe upon his shoulder, Thomas went deep into the woods to cut down trees. After working hard all day long, Thomas had a mighty thirst. He decided to get a drink. He walked toward the sound of the water, and through the trees he saw a waterfall. It was falling into a deep, mysterious pond. Thomas laid his wooden axe down on a rock near the edge of the pond and bent down to get a drink. As he bent down to get a drink, he heard something. Splash! He looked up and saw a large green frog swimming in the pond, and he laughed. Ha ha ha! It was only a frog. I thought my axe had fallen into the pond. He took one more drink from the fresh water and reached for his axe, but it was gone. He looked around. He scratched his bushy red beard and said, "Where is my axe?" He looked at the frog. Did you take my axe? But the frog quickly swam away. The pond looked very deep, and Thomas the lumberjack didn't know how to swim. He was just about to give up hope of getting back his axe when a golden-haired sprite swam up out of the pond. Is this silver axe yours? She asked. Thomas was startled. Who are you? I'm a water sprite. Is this silver axe yours? She repeated. I heard something fall into the pond. No, I had a simple axe made of wood. Thomas answered. The sprite dove back into the pond, and Thomas sat down. How can I be a lumberjack without an axe? He thought. While he was thinking, the sprite returned. Is this gold axe yours? What? Gold? I'm sorry. No, I had a simple axe made of wood. He said. The water sprite dove back down into the pond. She wasn't gone long when she returned. Is this wooden axe yours? Thomas looked at the axe and smiled because it was surely the axe he had lost. Yes, that's mine. It's a simple axe made of wood. The sprite gave the axe to Thomas and laughed. Still giggling, she said, "You are a very honest man. I will give you the silver and gold axes as a reward for your honesty." Thomas didn't know what to say, but before leaving, he remembered his manners. Thank you, he said. The next day, Thomas told his landlord what had happened at the pond. The landlord was a very greedy man, so he took an old wooden axe from the shed, went to the pond, and threw the axe into the water. He waited for the water sprite to come, and after a while, she did. Is this your silver axe? She asked. Yes, it is. The landlord replied. It must have fallen in the pond. The water sprite frowned and looked at the greedy landlord. You are a liar. This is not your silver axe. The landlord said, "Yes, yes, it." Before the landlord could finish his sentence, the sprite continued, "I collect people who lie. It's my hobby. Do you know how to swim?" The landlord knew how to swim, but he was suddenly afraid, so he lied again. No, I don't know how to swim. The sprite smiled coldly. Thank you for lying again. 
since you say you cannot swim, I will change you into a frog. There was a blinding flash of white light, and where the landlord had stood was a large green frog. The Golden Fish Once upon a time, there lived an old fisherman and his wife. They lived in a modest hut on a small island. Every day, the fisherman went fishing with his net. Usually, he did not catch many fish, but one day, his luck changed. Oh, my! The fisherman exclaimed as he started to haul in his heavy net. I must have caught an enormous fish! But when the fisherman looked in the net, he was stunned. The heavy net was empty, except for one tiny golden fish. The fisherman peered more closely at the fish. Suddenly, the creature opened its mouth, startling the man. Please do not kill me, the golden fish pleaded. Return me to the sea, and I will do whatever you wish. This is no ordinary fish, the old man realized. He took pity on the small creature. I am content, he said. I do not need anything from you. Go back to the sea. At home, the fisherman's wife asked, as she always did, Did you catch anything today? The fisherman shrugged. Nothing but a small golden fish. Then the fisherman told his wife about the extraordinary golden fish in his net. When the man relayed that he had let the golden fish go, his wife's face darkened with fury. You fool! She bellowed. That was a magic fish! Why did you let it go? Why did you not wish for something like bread for us to eat? The wife reprimanded her husband all night long. Finally, the fisherman couldn't stand his wife's complaints anymore. He returned to the sea to look for the magic fish. Little fish! Little fish! The man called out. Soon, the golden fish swam to the shore. What do you want, old man? My wife is very angry, the fisherman said. She wants me to ask you for something. What does she want? asked the fish. She wants bread, replied the man. You gave me my life, answered the fish. Go home, and you will find what your wife wished for. Then it swam away. When the man returned to his hut, he asked, Do we have bread now? We have plenty of bread now, his wife informed him. But our hut is in disrepair and about to collapse. Return to the golden fish and demand a fine new cottage. Little fish, little fish, the man called out. Soon, the golden fish swam to the shore. What do you want, old man? My wife is discontent. Now she wants a fine new cottage. The man answered. Go home, and you will find what she wished for, said the fish. Then it swam away. When the man returned home, he was amazed to see that a fine new cottage had replaced his small, modest hut. Just then, his wife ran toward him. Go back to the golden fish, she demanded. And tell the fish I want to be queen of this island. Again, the fisherman obeyed his wife's command and headed back to the sea. Little fish, little fish, he called out. Soon, the golden fish swam to the shore. What do you want now, old man? My wife wants to be the queen of the island. Go home, and you will find what she wished for, said the fish. Then it swam away. When the fisherman arrived home, he stopped in his tracks and stared in amazement. A magnificent palace, bustling with guards, horses, and servants, had replaced the cottage. 
The old man entered the palace. Sitting on a golden throne, dressed in the elegant attire of a queen, was his wife. Pardon me, wife, the man spoke quietly. Wife? How dare you address the queen as your wife? She screamed loudly. Guards, take this disgusting man away. The guards dragged the fisherman away. While his wife ruled the island, he spent his days sweeping the palace like a servant. Then one day, the queen summoned the fisherman. You, old fool, she ordered him. Go back to that fish and tell him that I no longer want to be queen. Now, I want to be the empress of the sea. What? The man stared at his greedy wife in disbelief. No, he refused, slowly shaking his head. You already have more than you need. Go to the fish or I will chop your head off, threatened the queen. The fisherman was taken back to the sea. Little fish, little fish. But this time, the golden fish did not appear. Little fish, little fish, the man called again. Still, the golden fish did not answer. The old man called out a third time. Little fish, little fish. Suddenly, the sky turned dark and the waves in the sea crashed and roared. At last, the golden fish swam up to the shore. What do you want, old man? The fisherman bent his head low and spoke in a trembling voice. My... my wife... now she... wants to be the empress of the sea. The fish did not say a word. Instead, it simply turned and disappeared into the churning waters. When the old man returned home, he could not believe his eyes. The magnificent palace was gone. In its place stood their old, modest hut. The fisherman and his wife returned to their former life. Every day the fisherman went fishing as usual. But he never caught the extraordinary golden fish again.